and hello everyone welcome back to another NIM tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be taking a look at sets, another data structure similar to arrays but not quite. So what we're going to cover at this moment is called a bit set. This is a type of set that is limited in the sense that it can only store very small data types. This includes numbers or characters. And this is of course for performance reasons. So as an example, let's go var my set. And my set is set of type char. And this should of course be a colon, not a, an equal symbol. So it's going to be a set that contains characters. And here we can say a to z. So this set contains all of the letters from A to Z, lowercase. We can also go A to Z. So it also contains all of the letters A to Z, capital case. And take note, I'm using single quotes here because single quotes are used for characters and double quotes for strings. Very important distinction to make. So this set here contains all of the letters A to Z, capital and lowercase. We can also make the set contain all of the numbers through 0 to 9. As simple as that. We can of course echo my set and if we run it we'll receive a set with all of the numbers from 0 to 9 of the letters from A to Z and then again but this time in lowercase a to z. There we go. Now sets also has more power that comes along with it. It has a standard library module that you can import to make it even more powerful. As an example, let's say import std, and this means standard library. And from there, we want to import sets. You could of course just say sets. This will work perfectly fine, but it's recommended to say std slash sets. I'll get later into why this is important in a future tutorial, but for right now, this is recommended, but you don't need to do that, you can just do sets. Now we're importing that, we open up a new world for us, such as to hash set. And here we can put in array, one, five, six, three, four, and five again. Hash sets do not have the limitation of a normal set. They cannot contain duplicates and they're also not ordered. Let's just echo out A and see what we get. 34651. So as I mentioned, it cannot contain duplicates and it will also not be ordered unlike a normal set. And as I said, it also doesn't suffer from the limitation like that a normal set does where you can only store very small values. So I can say hello, I am cool. I can say this and it will work perfectly fine. So unlike a normal set, a hash set will not yell at you if you put something in here that's a little bit too big for it. As an example, if we were to do a normal set here just to show you, then we'll get an error that says mismatch got string for hello but expected a range and if you were to say this is of type set and it contains a string it's going to give us an error because ordinal type expected that's what it says first and here it says there's a mismatch again because it expected a range so as you can see a hash set does solve that problem for you all right let's bring back that hash set we have and let's put back the numbers. There we go. We're going to use this a little bit later. Let's create another set. And this set we can call B and it will be two ordered set. And this is an ordered set. So it will be ordered later on. So it's the same as a hash set. It's just ordered. So it keeps the original order of the set. But this will of course make you struggle in performance later. But here, as you'll notice, this two hash set, it doesn't contain a specific order. So this one here won't be first, it will be last. The two order set, and we'll try and keep this order here as it is. So it's the same as a hash set, only difference is 
If we print that out, you'll notice it stays in the same order. I'm going to call this C and then I'm going to change up the numbers a little bit. So here we can have nine, eight and zero. And let's make one shorter than A. So now we have A and C. Because we imported this set module here, we can actually do things such as times C. And this should of course be a two hash set. It cannot be a ordered set. When you do this, you'll receive this output five and one. So by doing that, we are say basically saying, let me just copy that. We're saying a dot intersection of C. Now, for those of you who do not know this sort of math concept, which I had to learn myself when I learned about this, it will return what is in both set A and set C. So you'll notice both five and one is in set A and C, but six only appears in set A, three only appears in set A, and four only appears in set A. Same here, nine is only C, eight is only C, and zero is only C. So this returns what is in both. Similarly, you can merge the two sets by using a plus symbol. Or alternatively, you could say union. If we do that, the two sets are now merged. As you can see, both of them has each other's value. You can also return the difference between the two. For example, A minus C, or alternatively, A difference C. Now, if we were to run that, it will return all of the values that does not appear in C, but does appear in A. So you'll notice six, three, and four, these only appear in A, but they do not appear in C. Of course, sometimes you want to have the values that is in each other, but not in both. As an example, you might want nine, eight, and zero here and six, three, and four, because they only appear in their respective sets. If you want to do that, you can just say minus plus minus. And in here, you can say as an alternative, if you don't want to use that, symmetric difference. Now, if we run this, you'll see we get three, four, and nine. So three, four, and nine, as well as six, eight, and zero, six, eight, and zero. So the same as difference, but this time, instead of just returning the difference of one, it returns the difference of both. So what exists in one, but not in both. Let's create another variable. We can call it D. D will also be a two hash set of nine, zero, and five. Nine, zero, and five. Now, one thing we can do is we can say D lesser than or equal to C. Now this will return true if D is a subset of C, meaning if all of the items in D exists in C. So if nine, zero, and five, both ex or, or three exist in C, then it will be true. If we run this, we will get true because nine, zero, and five exist in C. But if we were to say nine, zero, and two, we'll get false because this number two does not exist inside of C. We can also say just lesser than, which means return true if D is a proper subset of C, meaning that C has more items than D and that D is a subset of C, which in layman terms just mean C should have more items and should have all the items inside of D. Let's create another variable E, which will also be a two hash set and it will just be two and 10. And in here we can echo out D dot disjoint E, meaning return true if set D and set E has none of the same items, which in this case would be true because D and E do not contain the same values. So it will be true. But if we try to do this with C and D, so let's say C here and D here, then it will return false because C does contain values of D. You can also compare these such as C equal equal to D. This will return true if both the sets are the same size with the same items. So basically they're going to have to be the same, just like a normal equaling here. 
In this case, it will be false. But if I were to copy this, meaning D is the same size as well as containing the same items, it doesn't need to be in the same order. This could be zero and this could be eight, just order swapped. It will return true. So if it's the same length with the same items, it returns true. So you can check the length of a set with either len or with card. And this will check the length of a set. In this case, the length is five. Potentially, let's say you wanted to clear a set such as D. We'll just make that a var so we can modify it. Then we can say, let's echo out D just so we know what's in D. Then we clear D and then we echo out what's inside of D. And of course we can't echo clear, that's a function. We run that. Then now we have that, then it clears D and then it echoes out nothing because D has been emptied. You can also check if a value exists inside of a set using contain. So echo C dot contains nine. This will return true if C does contain the number nine. So it contains the value nine. You can also do something similar to D dot contains or include. And here we could say four. We can then just echo out D and do it again. So this will check if B contains the number four and then it will return true. Otherwise, if B does not contain the number four, it will add it to D and return false. So let's run this. So here we have false. So it's checked, it couldn't find the number four. So it added the number four. Here you could see we added it. If we were to echo out the D before we added it, then you'll notice we get a value. There's no four, we get false. Now there is a value and we get true. So if it does not contain the value, it will add that value to the set. And that is the basics on sets in them. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.